Hello, good morning, everyone. Had some problems trying to get into the, the meeting here, but finally got in. Uh, let me know, guys, if you can hear me okay. Hi, teacher. Yes, we can hear you. Great. Okay, let's uh, get right into it today. Um, I want to give you much of today's class to work on basically two things, our e-portfolio and our educational philosophy. So I've created a file. What I would like to do is as you're developing your ideas about your educational philosophy, I'd like all of us to use a file, a Word document, that you can access through Microsoft Teams. If you go to the general channel to files, to the folder called ePortfolio. And within the ePortfolio file or folder, there's a file called Educational Philosophy. So the idea here is to use this space to develop your own educational philosophy so that we can also share and compare our own philosophies with uh, with others. And I can also provide you some feedback on your draft. When you're finished later this week, when you have completed your final draft for your educational philosophy, you can copy and paste it into the virtual classroom uh, for, for a grade, all right? This assignment, again, is due at the end of the week on Friday, as well as the ePortfolio. Today, also, if you want to work on your ePortfolio or you have questions about certain websites or even some technological issues, we can also we can address those uh, concerns during our live sessions this week. All right, so here you can edit the, the document here in the Microsoft Word and, or you can focus on your ePortfolio. Does anyone have any questions about anything we talked about yesterday? Uh, with regard to the uh, e-portfolio. Yes, me, teacher. Yes, go ahead, Dallas. Uh, mm, for example, I like yesterday I was um, creating my Wix uh, page, and I found out that I have uh, already won since I was in Prope. And uh, I have my own education philosophy, so my question is, do I have to make some changes or I leave it just like this. If you want to uh, go ahead and bring in your educational philosophy over uh, to this document as a starting point, uh, I would like for you to reconsider, think about your educational philosophy now and whether or not anything has changed. And if there's some, or maybe there's a different way that you can word your educational philosophy. All right, so before I just dive in and give you feedback directly to what you had uh, years ago when you were in Prope, I'd like for you to rethink it because w another aspect about edu the educational philosophy is that it changes as you change. And so as you, became, as you become more knowledgeable and skillful and mm -hmm. more knowledgeable about your practice, your teaching practice, your educational philosophy is also likely to change. So I would encourage you to begin using what you have, you've already developed in the past and then think about how you've changed and how maybe there's a different way of wording it. Maybe you have a different, slightly different philosophy in the way that you look at teaching and learning. Maybe look at some of the questions that we talked about yesterday and see if you can maybe include a few more questions that maybe you didn't include in your version from Prope. Okay. All right. And, and also, I yes. have another question, teacher. Yes, Ali. Um, I have um, some paragraphs when I was in Prope. Uh, do I have to um, delete all these paragraphs, or I just leave it like this? No, no. I would, uh, I would encourage you to keep everything. So this was kind of what I was uh, talking about yesterday. Also, is I want you guys to have a space not only for this class, but for any of the classes that you've completed in the past. So I encourage you to keep anything that you want to keep in your portfolio, even if it's not in my class, if it's in, from another class, I encourage you to bring that over 
into the e-portfolio. Of course, it's not for a grade in my for this class in particular, mm -hmm. right? But you know, this space is not meant to be just for something that I'm asking for in in this class. It's something that I think that uh, you can contribute to, so that when you graduate with a BA in English language teaching, you have a portfolio that includes various classes from various semesters throughout your your educative experience here at the university. OK, so yes, I would encourage you to keep anything that you want to keep. And of course, this is up to you. If it's if it goes beyond the class, the the products, the the assignments that we've done in this class, this is completely up to you as to what you want to include, what you want to take away. This is, uh, you know, very much up to you. OK. Yes, it's okay. good. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? All right, I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. I'm going to be primarily in this Word document, but if someone uh, has a question about your e-portfolio, you want to look at something specifically, uh, yeah, just jump in and let me know. I will say that I, I have included a, an example of an educational philosophy here as well. This is just an example. The What I've provided here is more related to general education. You might choose to focus more specifically on language education, uh, but it's really two different approaches, how, how specific you want to be. But do stick to those questions that we talked about yesterday, those, uh, those questions that relate directly to educational philosophy. In fact, if you do a search, I'll pull that up here real quick. Teacher, do we have, do we have to upload these to the to Teams before Friday? The educational philosophy. All right. So the idea with this document here is I would like either today or tomorrow for you guys to upload your educational philosophy to this document. I'd like actually that you work and progress here so that I can give you feedback for number one, that I can give you feedback here. I think uh, it's easier for me to have one place where I can see all of your work together. Plus, I want you to compare your educational philosophies with your classmates. So there's two reasons why I would like I'm cho choosing to use a shared word online document. Um, so I, I would much prefer that I see some of your work. I don't know today, tomorrow, uh, you know, Thursday at least too, th so that I can give you some feedback and you you can make changes to your draft and then upload it, the final product, the final version of your educational philosophy, maybe on Friday for the assignment. All right, if you guys are interested, uh, Thought Co., this is where I got some suggestions about questions that you can consider when developing your own educational philosophy. I think these are some really good starting points. And if you take the approach of just answering some of these questions and then deciding how you want to organize essentially the answers to these questions, I think that's a very good approach uh, for developing a good educational philosophy. All right, so you might just go through this list, answer some of the questions, the most relevant questions, the most important questions that you feel you want to include, and then go back and then make a unified, coherent, and cohesive paragraph. Maybe you even combine a couple of the answers to these questions, depending on you know, how you want to, to approach it. But again, I think the easiest way is to go through and just answer some of these questions and then as a as kind of a uh, outline or brainstorming uh, idea and then going later to draft your your paragraph this is thoughtgo thoughtco.com
Uh, Lisette, uh, do you have a microphone today? Uh, let me know, Lisette, if you have uh, your microphone active. Yes, teacher. All right. I w I'd like to talk. You've got a really good start on your uh, philosophy, uh, your educational philosophy. And I want to talk about a couple of things here with you. Uh, if you're looking at your, well, if you're looking at my screen, let's take this example. All right. And I want you to take a look at your sentences. Make sure that you can identify subjects and verbs, okay, for each of your sentences. For example, in this sentence, being able to interact in different contexts and become a, va a valuable person in society. So what would be the subject of this sentence? What do you think? No, don't have subject. I mean, you could you could say being able to interact in different contexts. Right, that could be a subject. Okay, that's called a participial uh, phrase. But you could, that could be, uh, that could be considered, or a gerund phrase. Right, that could be considered a subject. You could say, being able to interact in different contexts. Now, what we're missing here is a verb. Now, what verb do you think or what verb do you want to use for this subject? Being able to interact in different contexts. Mm. What do you think? Now I want you to compare my version with yours. It's pretty much saying the same thing. I, I want to try to say is is the same idea that you're trying to say here in the first example. So being able to interact in context helps helps one right helps one to become a valuable or a more valuable person in society so notice here this is my subject okay all of this is my subject this is a gerund uh, phrase all right so we have being able to interact in different contexts helps one to become a more valuable person in society All right so uh anytime where i indicate frag f-r-a-g this refers to a sentence fragment so you can go into youtube i think i included a link to one of the comments and see this video. There are many good videos, but I, I like this one. It's, it's short, but it gets right to the point. It explains what sentence fragments are. But it basically, they you're missing either a subject or a verb. When you have a sentence fragment, you're missing either a subject or a verb, right? Because those are the two elements of a sentence, of any declarative sentence that we need. We need both the subject and a verb in order for the sentence to be complete. 
If we're missing a subject or a verb, then we have an incomplete sentence. All right, so uh, I, I wanted to share this one example with you. I want you to take a look at your other sentences and see how you can fix some of your other sentence fragments. Um, and, and look at this last sentence as well. Build new knowledge to put into practice and to be, right? So we want to try to avoid uh, sentence fragments whenever we're writing an academic text or basically any, any type of text, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, teacher. Okay, all right. Um, teacher, in a comment you post WP, what is? Uh, this is a wrong punctuation. All right, so WP means, it stands for wrong punctuation, but it could apply to using a punctuation when you shouldn't, or maybe you're missing punctuation where you need to have punctuation, or you're using punctuation and maybe it's the wrong type of punctuation. So it could mean any of those three things. Okay. In your case, in your case, you're having a list of things, right? So um, the question is, wh which, how do you use punctuation to have a list? Okay, so that's what, uh, that's what I'd like for you to look at here. In this case, I think you're missing a punctuation in in your in your example. Okay, teacher. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Okay, guys, we're getting uh, close to the end of today's class. I included a link in Microsoft Teams under Post, and uh, there's a link to a an Excel spreadsheet. The spreadsheet is also in the ePortfolio folder, and if you get a chance, I would ask that you also add your name, the link to your LinkedIn profile, and also the link to your ePortfolio once you've had it uh, set up. Again, if you have one, um, if you've had one in the past and you want to use that same ePortfolio, go ahead and add uh, the link here in this, uh, this table here. This will just make it a little easier for all of us to see all of our links uh, to our ePortfolios and our LinkedIn profiles, okay? So when you get a chance, please input that information into the Excel spreadsheet. Continue working on your educational philosophy. Again, use whatever you've had in the past. If you have something that you included in your uh, LinkedIn profile, of course, bring it over and continue working on it here in the shared Word online document. Again, try to address as many of the questions that we've talked about as possible, talking about where you teach, when you teach, how you teach, why you teach, and uh, try to be specific if you can. If you're thinking about language teaching, if you're focusing your philosophy more on teaching children, then you can mention that specifically. If it's more related to young adults or maybe even professionals teaching uh, professional English or English for specific purposes, then you can even focus your philosophy in that context. But uh, think about your own particular approach, how you uh, you approach teaching and learning, and try to bring that into your educational philosophy. Again, please bring it over to this Word document as soon as possible so that I can provide some feedback this week as we develop our final drafts for this Friday. This Friday, both the educational philosophy and the ePortfolio will be due. All right, any questions, guys, about what we're doing uh, this week? No, teacher, please, please. No, teacher, thank you. 
All right, guys. Well, we'll stop there for today then and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. See you.